G'day YouTube land. Today on Garage It Yourself, I'm going to be showing you how to install modern seat belts onto a classic car. So let's see how we do that. Welcome back to Garage It Yourself, everyone. The channel dedicated to the DIY car enthusiast doing a restoration or customization on a vehicle on a budget. Today I'm going to be showing you how to properly install modern seat belts into a classic car. Now to be able to do that, the first thing you're going to have to do is get hold of the legislation for your local area, state, country, whichever. This will tell you uh, the requirements for being able to retrofit modern seat belts into a classic car to keep within like uh, safety guidelines for your area. So that's the first thing. Second most important thing is going to be the seat belt itself. This is obviously a retractable one. And they have to also comply with your local legislation. So uh, in, unless it's got international um, approval, then for instance i can't install a uk made seat belt in australia unless that seat belt has the local accreditation uh, to say that it passes australian standards so this one in particular locally made in australia then you're also going to need some steel this uh, is three mil thick and it complies with my local legislation. Um, it acts as the spreader plate behind the interior structure of the vehicle. So it spreads the load so that your nut and bolt doesn't pull, pull straight through the metal work. Because don't forget, your body works only 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a mil thick. So this is three mil thick. Uh, the area has to be uh, 3,750 millimeters squared. Um, this is 65 mil, so they're going to be 65 by 65, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than that, but that's fine. Um, it, it's mainly the three mil is so that uh, in the when you have an impact, that it will deform, uh, and if the plate is too thick, then instead of deforming, it will just tear through the bodywork, because like I said, it's only 0.8 or 0 0.9 of a mil thick. So the three mil will spread the load and it shouldn't pull through. So a bit of plate and then also some nuts. So you can weld your nuts to the back of the plate. Once the plate's welded into the car, then everything is permanently attached and you don't have to faff around trying to get a spanner or a wrench up into the bodywork every time you want to put the seat belts in and out. These are uh, 7 16th UNF. This is, as far as I'm aware, the um, international standard for fitting seat belts to older vehicles. Uh, on modern cars, they do use like slightly different threads these days, but 7 16th uh, is what these aftermarket seat belts seem to be using. And UNF, not UNC, UNF. Uh, right, so the next thing is I'm going to get the rear seat back in the car uh, to be able to then start measuring up and lining up where the mounting points that I need to drill to put the plates in. So uh, I'll get on and do that. Righto, if you're wondering why I'm doing the rear seat instead of for the front seats, well, I did the front seat mounting points like ages ago. So it's not as if I can go back in time and show you how to do that. So as I haven't done the rear ones yet, I can actually show you and the procedure is exactly the same. It's just figuring out where to put the mounting points. So with that in mind, the first thing is this sheet of paper. Just a bit of A4 with 
uh, equal lines drawn on it. And that was just so when you saw me doing the selfie, I could figure out where my shoulder um, sits in relation to those lines. And that is so that with the seat belt, you uh, normally it's best to have it so that it's coming down towards your shoulder a little bit and like not up over it just makes the seat belt like sit better on your over your shoulder and with that in mind what i'm going to do is the lower part of the loop where the belt goes through that is going to be approximately where my shoulder level is and with that in mind, the picture showed that C was approximately where the, uh, my shoulder lies, which means if I put this up with the lower bit of the hoop resting on C, so you can see, that means that the bolt hole is gonna be where A is. So fortunately, I like put it up just high enough to actually work that out Otherwise, I would have had to have redone that. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> so that's where the pivot point is going to be. And then because of the constraints of the rear being a bit different from the front, um, it's going to actually have four mounting points. So normally you would have your pivot point up the top, your wheel down the bottom, and also the other end of the strap um, also down the bottom of the b-pillar and then your belt buckle is your third uh, point so hence why they call it a three-point inertial reel it's no different to doing it for for a lot of modern vehicles you'll find that if you ever take them apart if they don't have the uh, the space available then they'll have the reel mounted separately uh, then your pivot point then the lower seat belt uh, mounting point and then your buckle mounting point so it ends up being four but it still acts in this in the same fashion it just means you've got to make an extra plate and they all have to be strengthened in the same way so yeah now um, I've just got to do a, a bit of measuring but I'm pretty like confident that uh, the mounting point falls within the uh, legislation. And uh, I just got to double check that, but I'm pretty confident in that. And then once I've done that, it's going to be a case of figuring out how to get the mounting plate um, in there. So yeah, so now let's figure out where the mounting plates go. the plates I start by cleaning off all of the coating of the steel so that I can put weld through primer on it and it's just a case of marking them up and uh, drilling them for the uh, bolt holes where the nuts going to go and then just cutting them to size and then once they're all cut that's just a case of rounding off the corners uh, they've got to be a radius of uh, five millimeters to be within legislation then also chamfering the edges uh, so again you don't have sharp edges that can pull through the steel and then welding on the captive nuts well uh, if you're lucky enough where you've drilled through for the mounting point it'll just be a, f a flat panel and there won't be any additional strengthening or bracing uh, there which just makes mounting the plate a lot easier you will have to uh, sometimes form the plate to match the shape of the body panel uh, which I've done on one already but then for the one where that uh, the inertia wheel actually mounts there's a strengthening plate on the body uh, for a body mount so for that <clears throat> 
end up having to make up uh, some additional spreader plates. Because you've got two options. You either like make up some spreader plates or you would have to try and form, like do a pressing on the three mil plate to allow for the step so that it would sit flush because the plate has to sit flush. So in this instance, and then you also want the um, shim or, or the additional spreader plate. You want it to be larger than the actual plate just so that you basically you got to remember that you're spreading the load and also everything has to be able to uh, deform so if you had the additional plating just behind here the same size there would be like more strength in that area so there's a likelihood that it wouldn't deform and it would just pull through the metal so by having the larger spreader plate behind it it just means everything can spread the load uh, more evenly and it should stop anything from tearing through Seatbelt. Feels good over the shoulder, so I managed to get the height right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Jobs are good. Just got to do a bit of uh, tidying up, a bit of touch up paint. And uh, there you go. Just a, a quick um, tech tip for when you're having to weld thicker steel to thinner steel. Um, doing it on the outside, it's not so much of a problem because you start on the thicker uh, material and then drag the weld pull towards the thinner material. Um, and then that normally works pretty good for me. When doing uh, this plate and the plate down there, um, I found I, I found in the past um, because it's trying to get the heat into the thicker material, so it's actually going to penetrate. And when you're working on like a six or an eight mil hole to do a plug weld, uh, that's not always going to um, work. So what I do is drill I've got a couple of like brad bits spot weld uh, drill bits uh, six mil and eight mil and I just use them to drill into the plate um, a couple of mil and then I also just get my little uh, Bunsen torch and I just like hold that on it until you can like see the heat spreading and I find that that just uh, helps get enough heat into the thicker material so that the welding is actually going to penetrate and therefore bond the two bits together um so yeah just quick tech tech tip there um otherwise i hope you found that useful if you did please like the video uh, if you like what i get up to on the channel please subscribe and um see you on the next one oh and don't forget to share it around as well
helps. Cool. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>